you know, we're approaching the end of quarter one of the year. We're almost a quarter way through, and I know that very clearly because I'm about to file my Q1 business taxes, which is never fun. But it's a good reminder to relook at our resolutions for the year. Are you keeping up with them? Yeah, I know we've got a lot of new people watching here, but I'm really big on setting goals, uh, both daily, weekly, monthly, definitely New Year's resolution, setting goals for the year. Now, one of my goals for the year is to become a much better welder, both in, uh, in the types of welding that I'm able to do, to add on more types, and to become more proficient in, uh, in the types of welding that I was already experienced with. And I am brand new to TIG welding. I just started this year. We actually have Lincoln Electric Canada Central and Century Welding, which is partially the, the Lincoln Electric distributor for Canada. Uh, we have them as a sponsor for the channel here and for our television program. Now YouTube has a way of drawing in all the elite professionals, all the people that, that want to tell you everything you're doing wrong without really giving you much, uh, much applause or, or, or letting you know what you could do better. Just this vicious criticism. And we got some of that on the knife tang repair that I did uh, a few videos back. Now, a few of the critiques of my process were founded. Some of them were certainly not. But the one that definitely rang true was that I was TIG welding a very small amount, but I was TIG welding that knife tank without gloves on. And I'm trying to get better at the, uh, the at-gap principle, all the gear, all the time. Sometimes when you're just trying to get through something quickly, you don't, uh, you don't get to it like you should. That's definitely something that I want to remind us all about, definitely remind myself about, is to always gear up. It's always worth taking the extra few minutes because we're learning these skills. We want to be able to put them into use for a long time. So we're going to glove up today. We'll just do a little bit of practice just for fun's sake here. And for all of you wanting to learn and try something new, wanting to step out, branch out, experiment and play, please do it. Do your own research, learn everything you can, be as safe as you can, and uh, go for it. Don't worry too much about all the naysayers out there. There you go, it doesn't get any more honest than that. No grinding, nothing. All I did was clean up the, the oxides on there on the wire wheel. That right there is my best one today. The 30 second electro that we switched to, I switched to right at the end there, uh, did well. And if I had a switch to the 330 second filler rod as well, this, this would have looked probably a fair bit nicer, nice, nice bit cleaner, nice, solidified dabs but uh, can't figure out those 116s yet but there it is in all its honesty we got to practice today
Woody. Hey, Woody. What a good job, boy. Thirty on a Thursday, guys. Although we don't do stuff like this very often, this is part of the reason that I made the decision, difficult decision in the beginning, to work for myself. Let's work our way down to the door. Doing some heat treating right now, guys. I brought a propane forge, just a forge I built myself. Someone commented on a recent video, how does a knife maker have so many, have so few videos running a forge? That's for a number of reasons. One, the forge is really loud. You can't talk while you're running it, really. Number two, it's a little dangerous, so you really need your wits about you. And I like to be very meticulous with how I run my heat treat. I don't like to be wasting time talking to the camera, moving the camera around and stuff. It's something I like to be uh, very conscious about safe about, very collected, so I don't like to run the camera. And the last thing I don't like to do is give away all of my secrets. <laughs> I use exclusively O1 steel, which I really like, and that I, I've been using and heat treating for quite a few years now, so. <laughs> my early days running the forge, actually, uh, when I switched to, first switched to a propane forge, I used to be very intimidated. Was, uh, the forge was very loud and aggressive, kind of like running the tiger torch for the first time. Just a lot. Working on the 316 heat treat up until now. Which gives you a little bit of extra play time. That's why I ran the camera. 316 is a lot, big hunk of steel. It takes a while to warm up, so you've got a few minutes. But the 1/8 steel I'm switching over to here now. Top of more is baked apples. Ooh, you really gotta, really gotta be paying attention. The temperature can get away from you real fast. 